I came back in 96 uh, after several phone calls from father. <laughs> where had you been? Oh, right where did I go? I went you over to North Carolina. Couple of yeah. uh, you were back couple, in Kansas City when you... Yeah, yeah. And then I moved back to Kansas City. I was enjoying the the young nightlife and uh, got engaged and broke that off. And then I said, yeah, this is fun. And he, boy, are you gonna come back? <laughs> okay, okay, yes, I eventually need to come back. I get it. And so I made my way back in 96 and it's just been a, a great ride and great experience and learned a lot, um, obviously. Uh, coming back, I was kind of sitting in my office, kind of looking over everything. I said, okay, this is what we do. and. I think, hmm, that's why I wonder how we can get this really going. And so I made a few phone calls to some distributors and said, what do, what do we need to do? What's going on? How are we going to get more product out there? And we had some discussions and it's it was a while before we had something new. You know, we were really ramping up in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s and in the 80s. And then things kind of, you know, mellowed out a little bit. And, and so I, I kind of thought maybe that's what it is. Uh, maybe we need something new. And. They gave us some frank feedback. Yeah, they are, which was great because, yeah. I mean, I like the honesty. What would they tell you? Uh, you're stale. stale. You're, you're make the best postal digger, your old company, but you're stale. Like, hey, thanks. I mean, I'm not a tiptoe around the bush type of guy either. Mm -hmm. So I that thought, sit there and thought about that. And I was like, that makes sense. And so then we started putting plans together of how we're going to change it. And obviously you want to add new products, but what do you want to add? You want to make the same old, same old. You want to do things different. Uh, and so we like to be different. And so we really put our minds together with our team and said, oh, what if we do this and this and make it like this? And a lot of our new products took several years to come out of R&D and several more years to come out of testing. And uh, you'd like to ramp it up quicker, but you got to go back to the old history. Good enough won't do. It must be right. Nobody needs to test our products. Nobody. We need to test design and perfect it. And then when we send it out there, we need to have that comfortable level that says, yep, there's another good piece of Danish equipment. If it has our name on it, again, it's, yep. it's gotta be right. We're not gonna let it out the door mm -hmm. without easily, knowing. Yeah. yeah, we could have shortchanged a lot of that and just thrown something together and you know learn from customers, but that's not the right way and to we've, do that. We've had people ask us and encourage us to do that through the years. Oh, if you guys would just do this or just do that, and you have to take a good long look in the mirror and say, that's not who we are. Right. Yeah, we're not in for the, the speed race. We're in for the long haul, <clears throat> which means we're going to be a little slower, but we're going to get it. We're going to do it right. We're a little slower sometimes. Eh, sometimes. Glenn, talking about your, your prior to coming back, were you working in, in the industry in some other faction? I was in sales. I was bouncing around doing retail sales and, and restaurant and bar. Mm -hmm. and uh, Just like I said, just bounce around as a young man, having a great time. Yep. Not a worry in the world. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, this is one thing I would give our parents credit. They never forced the business on us growing up. It wasn't, I mean, we obviously you grow up in a family business and you like to think that you leave work at home and you don't talk about it at the dinner table, but the reality is it's it's your life yeah. uh, and livelihood. So there is a lot of conversation, but they never mm -hmm. forced it. And I think we actually had the conversation in high school because I remember just thinking, I don't think I want to sell postal diggers the rest of my life, Dad. And then you grow up and you realize there's a lot more to a business than selling one end product. Mm -hmm. And for me, in my case, it was more a matter of realizing that, yeah, we are family owned and operated, but like Glenn said, we truly are a family business in a lot of ways. There's lots of people, lots of generations of other families that have been tied to Dan Hughes Machine Company mm -hmm. through the years. And realizing that responsibility, um, I think was really important for, for me. Now, I want to back up a little bit. You know, I came back <clears throat> officially in you know, sales, marketing in 96. However, I grew up in the company and my first job in the company was pushing a wheelbarrow in the basement, mm -hmm. collecting steel shavings out of a machine and dumping them into the recycle pit. And so I would have to push this heavy, god awful wheelbarrow around and uh, dump them. And then I eventually moved up to assembly. I did assembly work, I did warehousing work. I actually was in tool and dye for about three to four years to learn how to to read the different gauges and then thousands of an inch and uh, run mills and lays and so forth. Um, that was pretty important because I wanted to be, didn't want to be the kid that came back into the family business and went straight into the office right. and said, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I wanted to be the guy that's 
that did all the work all through there. I did everything in the shop except for production work. I did not, you don't want to put me on a machine to crank out production parts because they may not be correct. Yeah. <laughs> and so I didn't do that. But nowadays, you know, you get, uh, you get younger people in there that says, well, we're just, we just can't do it like that. And I'm like, well, yeah, hang on a second. I said, Let me go top off my coffee and I'll be right back. And I said, show me what you're doing. And he's showing. I said, now hang on. I said, what if you tried this, this, this? Well, how do you know how to do that? I like, I did this. This is one of my jobs I did when I was younger. Oh, I said, what did you think I did? I just figured you came on in and went straight to sales. And that was a reason. You know, I wanted to learn everything the ground up. Mm -hmm. And so I liked that, and I'm going to try to do the same thing. I, I agree with Janae that mom and dad never pushed the company on us. Mm -hmm. And just left it there and said, if you want to work, you know, you want to work there? Fine. You don't? Fine. I mean, I, we were mowing the yards outside the shop, you know, getting paid for that, too, when we were young. My first job was getting flies. Yeah, you were a fly killer. Yeah. And when it went up to, like, 10 cents a fly, I started going outside. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was... There was not a fly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what was your path into the business? Um, well, coming back to the business, I came back full time in 99. Um, like Glenn, I obviously grew up Did with Did you come around. right out of school? Or? Um, I graduated college in 96. Okay. And I moved out to Seattle for a couple of years and um, had some work experience there. And I like to think I learned a lot of uh, good lessons um, working for other people, some things to do and some things, a lot of things not to do mm -hmm. as an employer. And so that, that was really good. And I remember um, in particular uh, a, a tragedy that happened to an employee and, um, and that was part of the pull. And then Glenn and dad were calling me and, and letting me know this news and said, you know, do you have an interest in, in coming back? And we kind of joked to this day. He was telling me, yeah, you said you were just going to come back and clean things up for a few years. I was like, I don't think yeah. that was quite the way it went. Right. But I do now remember, she's built a house in town. Yeah. <laughs> but I do remember thinking, well, I don't know that I'll stay in Fulton. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was in Seattle. It was out of a need. You were needed to come back. And to oh, yes. He desperately needed yeah. my help. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I could contribute on a certain level there and and add to some things that we, we needed and and my background and organization background at that point you're a college graduate my, you know my background in organizational management uh, leaves you to, to think that you can do some things in a, in a family-owned business and and we, we did we you know i think in those early years and we have a very unique skill set with each of us and it blends well that's a good way of putting it, it? Mm -hmm. how, would it how would you describe that unique skill set i just made Tell that us. up yeah. <laughs> That's why it's unique. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, we balance I, each other well. Yeah, I really like to, to deal with people. I like to see people. I do all the trade shows. I travel to dealers. Uh, I, I like to listen. You know, what's the need on the farm, the house? What's the problem? And try to think, hmm. And I kind of tend to do a little doodling myself and say, well, what if we need something like this and throw it to the engineers and and so I'm kind of good with that. Um, I really enjoy the sales aspect and the marketing. I was pretty good in marketing in school. Um, and Janae is very detail-oriented, and she can keep us all on a straight and narrow path. I can crack the whip. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I tend to go left and right. and yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting because I think a lot of people assume that maybe some employees are more fearful of me or I, I don't know exactly that's not the right word because I would certainly say that's, <laughs> not, not, that's yeah. not the case when they come to me with their wide variety of personal issues sometimes very personal issues I'm like they're not that scared of me if they're going to tell me right. all the things that they do but that again that's part of being family owner operators we think that that's what's different you treat people differently you listen there's situations that happen in people's lives sometimes outside of their control and you deal with it as best you can and in a, a, a fair way by listening to each person. So we have fun, but we also get the business done. Yeah. yeah He's you front can, office you can and back that. office. So I've known Jerry, I don't know, 12, 13 years or so, but it, even early on, it had seemed that uh, it turned, he'd handed the wheel over to the company to, to you guys. Was it about that time period that? I, we actually, I mean, he's still our president and um, chairman of the board, um, but obviously the day-to-day -day operations for many years we, we've been handling. Um, I, but we certainly didn't take it over any time soon. It, we, we were there. Yeah, like, like you said, you know, once we were back and, and kind of in the business, then he didn't really need to come in every day and he didn't really want to come in every day, but there's no reason to, to remove him. 
Yeah. Like, why not? Leave him president, chairman, board. Yep. We can He's, pick his brain whenever we want. Yeah. Right. We can call a board meeting and really screw up a shooting. <laughs> <laughs> But what do you think that um, you've learned from from Jerry and Mom about business principles that that you want to that that you've that are embedded in your DNA and you hope to the next generation to certainly pass those very same? I would say ethics, morals, shoot straight, don't ever lie. You don't know the answer, get the answer, get back to the people. You know this. This industry is built on relationships. That's what it is. Okay, people buy from you because of who you are and how you deliver yourself. We've been with vendors for, I don't know, I mean, suppliers for 50 plus years. And we know we can get the parts cheaper, but we don't have any problems. Okay, so it's not necessarily driven by cost. You gotta ask yourself, why are we sitting here? Why are we a, a you know, fourth generation, 107 year old family company? And I can only come up with one word, and that's quality. So don't ever forget the roots of good enough won't do it must be right. We don't need to go out and shop all the components and start saving pennies, nickels, and dimes, and sometimes dollars. Because what happens if the life of the product then is shortened and things start to fall apart? You know, it's, it's not about the, uh, the cost. You gotta keep the quality. And I would add the lessons we talked about earlier that he you know, always told us, don't borrow money, the banks want it back plus interest, being good stewards of our money and, and mm -hmm. making sure that we've got, we're, we're comfortable and we can make payroll and saving up for capital improvements and, and things that we need to do. So we can be fairly conservative um, probably when it comes uh, to our financial matters. And I, and I think actually some of our longer term employees were pr pretty nervous in, in 09 and 10 coming out. We knew that business was going to come back. And we made some significant capital investments at that time that I think typically the hunker down mentality of some of the older generation, they were a little nervous, but as soon as it came back, we were prepared. And we really have not slowed down since. Glenn, you had <laughs> said you weren't, well, I guess both of you, weren't, weren't sure exactly whether you were going to come back to the mm -hmm. business. So what is it that ultimately, when, when that light bulb turned on, so this is something I got to be part of, or, you know, take us back to that point. You know, you, you watch your, your parents' um, life, and they were fortunate to do some traveling and some hunting. And I thought, you know, uh, I'd like to have that freedom, I'd like to be uh, my own boss. Well, you got but, snowed, didn't you? Yeah, big time. <laughs> yeah, now look at me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the same building now with her. That was oh. not as part of the plan. <laughs> but no, it's just to create the, the future. I mean, to, to actually think that, hey, I'm not just going to work from, you know, eight to five or mm -hmm. whatever, nine to five, and just, and you're, you're sitting there, you're actually doing something and you're changing it and you're making it go. And you can control this ship. I mean, if you want to go slow, fast, hard turn, U-turn, whatever, you got that power to do it. And so it's kind of exciting to see it, you know, just take off and spread its wings and it's starting to glide now. And so, um, I don't know. I don't really know what brought it out just thinking that okay i was sick of the 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 retail the restaurant the the bartending type stuff i was like i want to do something different you know and those type of positions you're always catering you know for those people and it's right there and don't get me wrong i do the same thing today but i get to do it on a different level a different scale you know the, the the bar you know they come and they sit down and they wait for a table they get a drink Okay, well now they're coming into the booth at the trade show and they want to know more about your product line. They want to know more about your company and how you do things. And that's your opportunity to get up and go. And I think I mentioned it for, before. For me, it was more of thinking of the employees, all the people that we're associated with. Um, you know, not just obviously the customers and, and maintaining a business. And, you know, obviously Glenn's married, has two kids. And so we can think of a fifth generation and try not to pressure them. I don't. And in... Luckily, Corbin is very fortunate. He has a younger sister that can. <laughs> I, I see very similar yeah. traits because he's kind of like me. You know, I'm yeah. going to call him the little Porsche. He likes to get up and go. Yeah. But sister, I've been she watching can, her. I she think, can keep it straight. I see an engineer in her. Ooh. She likes to tinker. And I mean, the little, little six-year-old has been putting puzzles together when she was a little kid. And, you know, I always choose the top of the box. Cheap, right? Mm -hmm. See how it goes together? Yeah, she just throws it aside. And then I'm like, what is she doing? I come back five, ten minutes later to finish. I'm like, she's detail-oriented. She might make a good product engineer. Mm -hmm.
You're fourth generation. Um, that's about as old as we're going to find, or the most generations we're going to find in this group out here. Looking forward, uh, fourth generation, there just doesn't seem to be like we're going to continue to see the, this kind of thing. It's very unique. Some of the older companies we've seen have, have sold out to other, other companies and they don't, they don't have it still. What do, you, what do you think are the, what are the keys to those who want to see it passed on to that, in your case, fifth generation? Change. Don't be scared of change. You have to think outside the box. You have to take your blinders off. What you've been doing for several years, like building quality pieces, that shouldn't change. But building the same pieces, that should change. Okay, and so you need to address what's what's happening, what's changing in the world. How is farming changing? How is construction, utility, all these industries are changing? I mean, you got drones and you got uh, automated tractors and, and so forth. And so you, you've got to you got to keep going forward, and you got to you can't be scared. And I think that's where some people are like, well, I don't really know if I want to go here. And I was like, get in there. And so. That's what I think. And I think it's also not just business model in terms of products and what you're selling and your vision of your company. There are a lot of logistics involved in passing on a business and, mm -hmm. and buying a business and inheriting a business and, and all we could, you know, go on to politics and finances and taxes and all that sort of stuff. We could all talk for a long time, but there are a lot of logistics involved um, in taking over a business. Mm -hmm. Our audiences are often, you know, farmers, dealers. What do you think that many people do not realize about running a, a, a short line equipment manufacturing operation? The Could time, the energy. The gray uh, hair. The, oh yeah, yeah, look at that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's older. <laughs> uh, the time away from your family. He doesn't have to work with himself. Right. That, yeah. That's there you is. go. Yeah. I don't argue a lot with myself. Yeah. I, I, a lot of these are named Glenn. Yeah. I definitely have, have named each one. So. But I, it's. Uh, I think a lot of people think it's just easy street. You know, I was like, oh yeah, you guys, you know, get to do what you want. And just, you know, and, <clears throat> and uh, it's not. I mean, you really have to think about it. Right now, we're what ninety mid nineties employees or something Be like that. Between ninety and five and a hundred full time employees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the next family you got to worry about. Of course, you got your, you know, your own family, but then you get them. Okay, you have to take care of them because they have children, they have wives, girlfriends, and they need the stability, and, and you need it too. And so it's a, it's a compromise. You got to work this thing through, and it's our job to keep the lights on, keep the machines running, finding new things to put on them. If our, if this machine's only running at twenty percent production, well, let's find some other stuff to put on this machine. And let's get it going. And so, you know, along the lines of perceptions, that's one extreme. I think people think that, yeah, sure, it's, it's easier running the show. But I think there's also that other extreme. And this is not to alienate our audience, but I think that we could all look in the mirror and go, sometimes in agriculture, we get a little doom and gloom. And, you know, it's raining too much or it's drought or it's this or it's that. And, and we're uh, I like to consider it more realistic than pessimistic. Mm -hmm. um, but those challenges, sometimes I think that we can can get a little down in the challenges when in reality, there's a lot of optimism and there's a lot of moving forward and there's a lot of innovation and and still entrepreneurial spirit alive in our industry on behalf of the the, the staff of farm equipment sure appreciate uh, you making some time for us today and tell a very interesting story about your fourth generation business we very yeah. much appreciate the appreciate opportunity it. thank you thank you thank you